as distinguished ladies and gentlemen, no protocols observed. Your Excellency, the First Lady, today marks yet another day when the world pauses to celebrate the tremendous efforts, achievements by women and girls around the world in shaping a more equal future and recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Your Excellency, from the onset, allow me to celebrate the work of grassroots women on a day-to-day -day basis from fetching water, firewood, to cooking and cleaning and taking care of children, sick and the elderly. This work mainly is not paid. Mandeleo worked with county governments and has been to the counties from 2019 to Kanjando to Nyeri, to Embu to Mbere South, to Kisi and Nyamira, Homa Bay Bugoma, Kakamega Mbusia last week. And this week we are going to be in Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay and Migori. And so because we are on the ground, Your Excellency, I can tell you that women are doing a tremendous work in sustaining families, communities, and indeed the local economies. Today, we celebrate them. Can we clap for those women? <laughs> Your Excellency, where I am as my Indileo chairperson, I celebrate all my predecessors, my former patrons, my current patron, my board, my board of trustee, the entire management, the entire membership, the women of Kenya, Kenyan women, most of us are mothers of mind, Leo women, alive and fallen. This is their day. Can we clap for our fallen mothers? <laughs> we celebrate the very many women, women leaders who have broken the glass ceiling and gone beyond. And today, they are either county first ladies, CS is like we have two of them here, CAS, like we have two of them there, and others in the crowd, women, um, uh, women members of parliament, PSs, doctors, nurses, teachers, women in the village in Nyumbakumi, in the provincial administration, women in churches, mothers' union, women in the women guild, Catholic women association, widowed women who are head of households, married women, our daughters, married and single mothers, women leaders of Chamas who contribute substantially to our economy, women mem members of parliament, senators, M MCAs, and all other women leaders fears. We celebrate you. Can we clap for them? <laughs> Today, Your Excellency, we also celebrate women in the media. They have done a great job and one has just left here. I stand here as the national chairperson to celebrate you, Your Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya. The work you do every day through the Build Zero campaign to save the lives of many women and girls in our country, and you do it quietly. You indeed are our number one trailblazer. Today, the girls you are dealing with on teenage pregnancies we just came from Narok, and we know with Beyond Zero, we are in Machakos next week. And the big job of taking care of His Excellency, the President, and your family. Can we clap for the First Lady? <laughs> your Excellency, my world is grateful for the opportunity to work with you in Beyond Zero from 2015 to date. Today, we can conf confidently confirm that grassroots women, maternal health issues have significantly improved through your initiative, not to mention the reduction in child mortality. We thank you for saving us, serving us Kenyan women tirelessly with such compassion, humility, dedication. Don't we thank you for the marathon, which we are dearly missing. Your Excellency, even as we celebrate women achievements, we know that a lot has to be done to achieve an equal future. Mandeleo in complementing the government efforts and working towards SDGs is supporting women in a national water harvesting project, which was launched courtesy of our minister by His Excellency the President in December 2020. This guarantees dignity for our women and reduces vulnerability on our girls 
who have to walk many kilometers to fetch water in the evening. And indeed, it is, it is part of fighting the SGB, SGBV. As I conclude, I celebrate my former ministers in Mandeleo, but in a special way today, I celebrate my minister, Professor Kobia. Can we give a clap? We celebrate one minister sitting in defense. We know what is happening in Somalia and she's here today, Dr. Ambassador Monica Juma. A clap for Ambassador. As we celebrate our minister in foreign affairs, CS uh, Rachel Mamo, as we celebrate CS Amina, as we celebrate CS Karyuki, and we celebrate uh, CS Karone. Finally, allow me with all humility to call on each one of us to join in the Mandeleo uh, giving grassroots water, dignifying their lives, and Mandeleo has partnered with Equity Bank, and we are right at the grassroots. This is going to go a long way, even as we begin the road to recovery from the COVID, Your Excellency. During COVID, I was able to spend a lot of time in the farm. My minister knows she used to get me there. And indeed, it is true what the women have to go through in fetching water. Allow me, uh, Your Excellency, just to say, as a former exporter from the 80s and going into the world market with the ladies like the late Mother Mugambi, the late Naomi Muniu, and others, the late Mother Mugambi, Eva, what you've told us. It is good as we are in our old age to see business come home digitally. Thank you very much. May the good Lord bless this meeting. Thank you, Dr. Kobia. Thank you, Ambassador Mugambi. At this moment, I would now like to invite the first lady. I would now like to invite the, the first lady. The next speaker, Mr. Stephen Jackson, UN resident coordinator, to come and speak to us. A round of applause, Tafadali. Good morning, friends. Karibu kwa siku ya kimataifa ya wanawake. An African proverb is my inspiration today. When sleeping women wake, mountains move. Your Excellencies, Madam the First Lady, Madam the Secretary General, General of the Commonwealth, CSs, CSs, PSs, my dear brothers and sisters from the United Nations system, or sisters and brothers from the United Nations system, representatives of civil society from the private se sector, from the fourth estate, distinguished guests, all protocols observed, and above all else, friends. I'm very honored to join the government of Kenya and you all today in commemorating this year's International Women's Day. Today we celebrate the progress made in advancing gender equality and empowerment of women in Kenya and around the world. And Madam PS, if you'll forgive me, I fear I may be a little older than you, you reminded us of Beijing. But before Beijing came Nairobi, before Beijing came Nairobi, and in my mementos from my student years, I have a yellow kanga. I don't suppose there's anybody wearing it in the, the audience that I bought here in 1986, the year after the World Conference to review and appraise the achievements of the decade for women uh, here in Nairobi. It's a beautiful kanga. I'm gonna to have to pull it out of my stores and bring it next year. So we celebrate the progress in Kenya and in the world and to which Kenya has contributed, but we also steel ourselves to overcome the barriers that still remain that prevent women from achieving their full potential and thereby from societies and the world achieving their full potential. Friends, 
At home in Ireland, when I was about 15, just a few years before I bought that kanga, and my brother was 17, he suggested to me one day that we should go into town and attend a lecture by a very prominent visiting American feminist and activist. My mother was rather astonished when we said that we were going into town to hear this lecture. And she said, where did you two learn to be such feminists? We were equally astonished. And in reply, all we could do was point at her, point at our mother. We said, we learned it from you. Because you see, in our Dublin home when I was growing up, my father was the, the dreamer, the idealist, the visionary. But it was my mother who balanced the books in the house, who managed the money. My father only very recently even managed to get a credit card. When we needed new shelves in the house, it was my mother who would buy the wood, saw the planks, nail them to the wall, and put our books up. When the car had a flat tire, I have a very vivid memory of my mother underneath the car with the jack, and my father sort of <laughs> looking around a bit like this, wondering quite how to be useful. I love my father very much, but it's a true story. So it's from my mother that I learned my feminism. And it's from the inspiring women around us, here on the platform, here in the audience, connected to us today, and all around the world, that we absorb the lessons of true leadership. A leadership anchored at once in the head and in the heart. Friends, this year's theme, as you well know, is women in leadership achieving an equal future in a COVID-19 world. It puts the issue of women's leadership and participation front and center. Why? The answer is, of course, very simple. International Women's Day 2021 comes at a time when the world continues to navigate the COVID-19 pandemic and its staggering impacts on all of us and on women in particular, from being pushed into poverty to the loss of jobs as the informal economy shrinks to alarming spikes in domestic violence and the unpaid care burden. We've seen a sharp and deplorable increase as many previous speakers have noticed in violence against women, physical and sexual abuse, child marriages, uh, premature pregnancy, FGM. Often the perpetrators are family members and friends. But the COVID-19 pandemic has also reminded us that when more women are in decision-making positions, more inclusive decisions are made, more voices are heard, and better solutions are imagined and enacted. When we look around the world, it's hard not to be struck by a remarkable fact. Many of the countries that have managed this pan pandemic the best are led by women. And at a much more, a much less exalted note, I'm very proud to note that in the global ranks of resident coordinators of the United Nations system, like myself, since 2019, we have been at exact 50-50 parity. Equal numbers of women and men leading the UN system around the world. The lesson is vital and clear. We must include women to achieve a better, a more equal, and a more sustainable future. So friends, I want to congratulate you and your government for the impressive progress made on, on advancing gender equality and the empowerment of women. On the political front, We've seen more women appointed across different key decision-making positions, assertively moving towards the level playing field, but we need more. The fight for gender equality does not and cannot stop there. Operationalizing the constitutional provision requiring that not more than two-thirds of one gender occupy seats in the National Assembly and the Senate, for example, those are the next bold and vital steps. UN Kenya has long supported Kenya's electoral preparedness. And even as we encourage more women to run for political office, we deplore that political violence is so often targeted against women. 
We must address together this intimidation against women's political leadership. We must face it down. We must create a safe and conducive environment for all women and all women leaders. UN Kenya has been supporting the Kenya Women Parliamentary Association, Kewopa, women's rights organizations and government institutions to do just this and to build women's leadership. We've organized mentoring for aspiring women leaders, engaged communities in revisiting negative social and gender norms, and we've supported and will continue to support advocacy to safeguard the gender, gender quota in the Building Bridges Initiative. But these efforts will not be enough without legislative change. On women's economic empowerment, UN Kenya salutes the government's Women and Women's Enterprise Fund, the Youth Fund, the Uezo Fund, the Access to Government Procurement Opportunities Law, which provides that 30% of government tenders should be allocated to women, youth, and people with disabilities. UN Kenya itself also strives to help eradicate the scourge of gender-based violence on which so many speakers have dwelt. We've supported this government to develop rigorous, vigorous national policies and laws to prevent and respond, to maintain a free SGBV hotline, and to establish a special unit at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions that is dedicated to working on GBV-related cases and to fighting female genital mutilation. And I'd like to follow my brother Simon and others in saluting the leadership of His Excellency, the President and many others uh, involved today in fighting FGM. Promoting inclusion, empowering citizens and maintaining dialogue mechanisms simply makes for resilient communities when and if women are engaged. National and county government efforts like the eight-point economic stimulus package and the county COVID-19 socioeconomic re-engineering and recovery strategy have helped to cushion vulnerable groups from the worst impacts of the pandemic and with women to the fore. Friends, we also congratulate the government of Kenya on its election to the United Nations Security Council, to the AU Peace and Security Council chairmanship, and to chairmanship of the East African community. Wow. What a responsibility. What an opportunity. We must seize it. All three of these are unique vantage points from which Kenya can exert its leadership to progress the mutually enforcing triple goals of women, peace, and security in the region, on the continent, in the world. Kenya has demonstrated her commitment to advancing the women, peace, and security agenda by prioritizing the implementation of its second generation national action plan on the UN Security Council 1325 on women, peace, and security. And that plan runs from 2020 to 2024, and we in UN Kenya are very proud to support. Madam First Lady, uh, Madam Secretary General, honored friends, as I begin to wind up, exactly a year ago, Kenya launched its national chapter of the African Women Leaders Network, the AWLN. And that's an inspiring collaboration between the African Union and the United Nations, an incarnation of the shared vision of both organizations to foster and engage women's leadership under the patronage of Her Excellency President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. And again, UN Kenya, and I know UN Women in particular, are honored to be providing support. So wherever, whenever I, whether I look forward as the newly arrived UN Resident Coordinator for Kenya, to my work with the distinguished women leaders that I join today, or I look backwards to that first woman leader that I have known, my mother. My inspiration for and my admiration for female leaders grows and grows. Female leaders are to be found everywhere around us, working in state house, working in their house. 
And here today, I want to congratulate particularly the prize winners that we're going to have the opportunity to salute in just a few minutes. In closing, I want to celebrate with you particularly the unsung heroines, the women who stood and stand today on the front lines of the COVID-19 crisis as healthcare workers, innovators, teachers, caregivers, community organizers, mothers, and as some of the most exemplary and effective national leaders in combating the pandemic. To close, dear friends, one of the world's most remarkable women leaders, United Nations Deputy Secretary General, Her Excellency, Madame Amina Mohammed, puts it simply and puts it best. She says, remarkable times call for remarkable women. Let us together pledge to do everything in our power to foster, promote, enable, and empower Kenya's remarkable women to exert their leadership for positive change in these unprecedented times. Asante Nisana. Thank you very much for that wonderful speech. At this moment, Your Excellency, I would like also to recognize the chair of Women Enterprise Fund, Njoki Kahiga, who is here with us. I also want to recognize the chair, Uwezo Fund, and also UNDP County Representative, Dr. Walid. At this moment, allow me to invite the next speaker and invite remarks from Honorable Christopher Bazivamo, Deputy Secretary General, East African Community Secretariat to speak to us. Your Excellency, First Lady, Republic of Kenya, Mama Margaret Kenyatta, Special Guest, Secretary General, Commonwealth, Patricia Scotland, Your Excellencies, Cabinet Ministers, Professor Margaret Kobia, Ambassador Monica Juma, Principal Secretaries here present, AU Representatives, UN and other international organizations, representatives here present, ladies and gentlemen, or protocol observed, I feel privileged and honored to talk in front of you on this historic moment. So first of all, happy Women's Day. I wish to say that I'm happy to be here also on this occasion of the launch of a 50 million African women speak digital networking platform. The one which has been presented to you just a couple of minutes before. And I, asked, I stand here on behalf of East African Community Secretary General, Ambassador Liberat Mfumukeko. But as you know, the community has been blessed in this month of February, especially on 27th of February, to get a new Secretary General from Kenya, Dr. <laughs> Peter Matuki, who is coming to begin his task in what one coming month, let's say on 26th of April. But I wish also to inform you and I'm sure you know it, that the community has been blessed on the same date of 27th, 
to see elected chair of the East African community, His Excellency Uhuru Kinyata, for President of the Republic of Kenya. So he's going to be leading us as East Africans for the coming year. And we expect, of course, all women and men in Kenya to be with him in this integration agenda. As many of you are aware, for the last two years, the East African Community Secretariat, in collaboration with the ministries responsible for gender, youth, ICT, agriculture, and DSC affairs, has been engaging different stakeholders to develop the 50 million African Women Speak networking platform that intends to provide women with access to information on financial and non-financial services to help them start or grow their businesses. The platform's intention is also to connect women in ways that will foster peer-to-peer -peer learning, mentoring, and the sharing of information and knowledge with communities and access to trade, finance, and market opportunities between urban and rural areas and across borders. To put it briefly, it's an information resource portal and original project that is being implemented across 38 countries that form three different regional economic communities in Africa, which include ESC, COMESA, ECOWAS. So, and you are moving together. Honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Popoto has rich information that include but not limited to information on trade instruments signed by our partner state and their relevance when it comes to regional and global trade, information on institutions which provide access to affordable finance to women and entrepreneurs at concessionary rates, information on financial literacy, training, coaching, and information on critical aspects of capacity building, just to name a few. Allow me, therefore, to take this opportunity to thank each one of you who have contributed to this achievement, directly or indirectly, or above, above mentioned information to be available. And the East African Community Secretariat had to work with different stakeholders to make sure that this platform is populated with rich and valuable information that responds to the needs of women in business in Kenya. This platform that we launched today at national level here in Kenya has already been launched at continental level during the Global Gender Summit, which was held in Kigali, Rwanda on the 26th of November, 2019 but it has also been launched at national level already across our region in the republics of Burundi, Rwanda, Uganda, and the United Republic of Tanzania, including Zanzibar. At the ESC level, we had initially planned to launch the platform in each partner state during the month of March last year, but due to the, out to the out outbreak of the coronavirus and the lockdown, which followed in some of the partner state, it was not possible to do it as initially planned. But the good news is that the platform is up and running, although not populated 100%, because of course it has to be continuously updated. It contains enough and useful content that our women can start using. They have already begun. Besides the information area, the platform has also a networking area where women in business can meet to discuss social and economic issues that have a direct impact on their businesses. Honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I am aware that women in business here present are already leveraging technology 
to market their products. They are using the global social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and others to promote their products. The good news with this platform of today is that we are going local with a new platform. The 50 million African women networking platform has been developed using the information collected nationally and regionally and is very full on information that responds adequately to women needs what was actually the target of this initiative. You are happy, you are bringing something, we have control over all the content, the images you share on the platform and all the information you provide while registering on this platform and we ensure that, we, we, that this is managed within East Africa. So we have our own content developers and the sources of information have been verified and found trustworthy to provide information to our women in businesses. We are aware that uh, we are making the right step in empowering women, especially women in businesses on our continent, not only in the region here in uh, uh, East Africa, but in the whole Africa. But we know also, of course, that new uh, initiatives have also or bring together with them new challenges. We know that most of our women who are targeted in this project do not have necessary skills needed to operate the platform, though we have done our best to make, the, to, to make it user friendly. The 50 million platform is acceptable via the web and available as an app. This means that the women must have access to computers or smartphones, and yet the ICT equipment needed for women to access the platform is not everywhere. It is limited. We know also that the electricity required by users to recharge the ICT tools, if they have them, is also not readily available everywhere. In some areas, it is a challenge, especially in uh, remote rural areas. So I wish to say that uh, solutions to mitigate these uh, uh, foreseen challenges are also under development. And I wish to inform that uh, a plan to use the SMS has been also uh, been put in place. And we are also working with uh, telecom companies to ensure they are available affordable smartphone to women. My hope and belief is that Africa will not wait for everything to be in place to start dreaming big. Many projects and approaches work well in Africa, sometimes even better than elsewhere. The way African countries have been also, uh, let's say, involved in this COVID pandemic and uh, trying to find uh, solutions, and in most cases, some grow, uh, homegrown solutions is commendable. And it has been also an opportunity in some areas actually to push for local production in things which we were importing from outside. And this is something we need to appreciate. Honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to conclude my statement by thanking all the policymakers and staff from the various ministries who have been part of this process, the content developers and the various stakeholders who have been consulted during the last two years for making this day become a reality. I also wish to sincerely thank the African Development Bank for making available the funds to develop this networking platform. It's a digital one. And here I wish to emphasize at the East African community level, we have been coordinating all matters around COVID. We have a regional uh, coordination committee on COVID, which have, uh, has uh, 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 national uh, task forces on COVID representatives. Here uh, in Kenya, I have been uh, lucky to work together with uh, uh, Dr. Lili Nyaga, 
and later on with uh, Rosaline Mukiri. And uh, we share all this information, what is happening at uh, uh, partner state level and considering together how to harmonize processes and ensure uh, we bring some kind of value addition, especially when it comes to moving through out East African community partner states. And I wish to testify here that we have witnessed that this, during this difficult COVID-19 times, those businesses who embraced online digital services have remained relevant, and those who ignored these digital approaches have faced severe challenges. And I wish here to say it's important actually to be on board on this platform because it will be a tool to help actually access information, network with other stakeholders and businesses, especially women in the whole continent. Let's say beginning by with uh, 30, 38 countries. This platform is actually a platform for women economic empowerment, networking them to help them start their businesses or grow their businesses, or even later expand the market. And the market on the whole continent is of course more interesting than a market on only in one country or in the only region, which is East Africa. When you move towards the whole continent, it becomes more attractive and more profitable. So I wish to conclude my last word to women in business by saying that you should continue to think big to explore and venture into diverse areas in order to expand your businesses for the development of your families, your country, East Africa, and Africa in general. Happy Women's Day. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Secretary. General in East African Secretariat. Uh, on the same note, I would like to recognize the chairperson of Women in Business, Mary Mudoni, who is in the auditorium. Thank you for attending, and I hope you have listened to our speaker. At this moment, uh, our chief guest, Your Excellency, the First Lady, I also want to recognize our Excellency Governor Ann Waiguru, who is watching us all the way from Kirinyaga with your team. Thank you for representing the Council of Governors. And uh, we have your speech, which will come later on. For this moment, I would like us to have a short break. Allow me before we move to the next session of the program. We have been sitting for long. I may I request that we all be upstanding so that we can stretch ourselves and at least have some exercise, which will be a dance. Allow me to introduce a renowned musician, Amy Kosge, with a Somebody tell her 
It's a season. Pussy, oh, go pay my man. Pussy, oh, go pay my man. Where we just hit him, my man. Thank you for that break. As we usher in and we move into the next level of the program, and at this moment, it is my great honor and privilege to invite the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Public Service and Gender, Professor Margaret Cobia, to come and make her address and move on with the program. Welcome. Tumpigia Makofi. Thank you very much, uh, June Ogora, our um, director of the program, our chief guest, Her Excellency Honorable Margaret Kenyatta, the first lady of the Republic of Kenya. Let me recognize everybody who is here. And because I'm going to come again, Your Excellency, I just would like you to allow me to have two of our guests, and one is a CS who is with us, to make our remarks, then I will come and invite you. On resolution 1325 regarding women, peace, and security, we work very closely with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Defense. And it happens the three of us are women and we support each other strongly. <laughs> For that reason, Your Excellency, allow me to recognize the representative of Minister of Foreign Affairs. The CS told me she will not be here personally, but she will send somebody. And I think she sent Ambassador Makena Mushili. Just stand where you are and they just wave. <laughs> that is the representative of Minister of Foreign Affairs working with us on the resolution 1325 on women, peace, and security. Uh, the next one is CS Juma who was, was, now she has worked with us in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and now in defense. And I would like her to come and give a goodwill message and give her remarks. And thereafter, she has really worked with our visiting guest speaker, Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, Queen's Council, who has really honored us to be here today. And I know they have worked closely in the past with the CS, Dr. Juma. So I also ask after Dr. Juma has made her comments and remarks, please invite uh, Right Honorable Patricia to give a speech. And then thereafter, I'll come back and invite our first lady. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, um, um, Professor Kobia. Your Excellency Margaret Kenyatta, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, our guest, Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth Secretariat, colleague Professor Kobia, Chief Administrative Secretary is present, PS is present, UN Agency's representative, Excellency Ambassadors and High Commissioners, members of Parliament President, Chairperson Maendelea Wanawake, and other women leaders here today, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, happy International Women's Day. I am greatly honored to join you in marking this International Women's Day in recognition of the immense achievement of by girls and women around the world in influencing and shaping a more socially inclusive world. The matter of women equality has over time transformed from being an activist agenda to an imperative for societal transformation. 
Today, science informs us that gender equality is good politics. It is good economics, it is good governance, and it is good society. So the full involvement of women across all sectors creates a better society that is likely to realize its full potential. We in the Ministry of Defense preceded today's event on Saturday with a cut and razor that underscored the nexus between women, environment, and security. At the Ngong Road Forest, and in recognition of the bold vision of our iconic Wangari Madai, we sought to restore Mother Nature and had a rewarding mentoring session under the auspices of the MOD Gender Mentoring Program, codenamed the Athena. You will remember the Greek <laughs> goddess associated with wisdom, handicraft, and warfare. So on Saturday, some 200 women from the security sector, diplomatic corps, the private sector, and a select group of girls from KDF-sponsored schools, as well as men in leadership positions, including the CS for Environment and Forestry, planted 2,000 trees as a challenge to environmental degradation. Our convening today, as has been said by those that have spoken before me, is a unique opportunity for us to reaffirm our shared objective, to reflect on progress made, but also to strengthen friendships and partnerships. It also depends our solidarity in support of one another, offering inspiration and hopefully an opportunity for mentoring each other. Luckily in the MOD, as in many other sectors, we are not beginning from the scratch. We have a comprehensive gender policy that was adopted in 2017, and we have been following with an array of structures and resources that seek to promote gender mainstreaming. And like in many other jurisdictions, we have our women fully integrated in the defense forces across all masterings. Today, the ratio of women to men is approaching 15%, with an enrollment ratio of one to three. To effectively leverage the successes of this policy, MOD has launched a structured mentorship program that focuses on training on strategic leadership, operational, as well as personal development. It is the aspiration of the mentorship program to also include women from other security agencies. We continue to contribute to UN peacekeeping missions, both regionally and internationally. And we continue to create preparedness at the highest level before deployment for peace support operations. The experience of COVID has also seen the defense tech lead role. When COVID struck us last year, at the tail end of the first cycle of an unprecedented locust invasion, we saw KDF scale up efforts in support of civil action. We supported the Ministry of Health in undertaking measures to curtail the spread of COVID. We led in the establishment and continue to man the National Command Center on COVID. We supported and continue to support the Ministry of Interior in manning our borders and continue to assist in the provision of services such as water and movement of provisions. It is instructive that we also took over the rehabilitation of critical infrastructure to ensure the movement of goods and services within and across our borders. Throughout this period, I have had the fortune of witnessing firsthand the work of women in the defense forces and across the security sector as they perform their core functions as well as, as caregivers in support function. In doing this, they have added great value to the quality of services delivered and that we continue to deliver. I therefore today, as I join all of us, seek to commend the passion and commitment of promote, to promoting gender equality and elevating the profile of women in the security sector. I also wish to register on behalf of the MOD and the entire security sector, our gratitude to the commander in chief his Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta 
who continues to demonstrate an unflinching firm belief in the leadership of women in the critical fields of security ministries. It is no mean feat that the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Interior have throughout the tenure of President Kenyatta seen numerous top leadership appointments. This is illustrative of his demonstrative leadership in the empowerment of women in critical sectors of the government. Research and experience from across the world has indicated the commitment of top leadership as a critical factor in carrying forward the gender agenda. And therefore, I wish to personally thank the president for this opportunity for us to serve. This positive development has also been witnessed across the other security sectors and is not a preserve of the MOD alone. I have been witness to the working of the first cohort of women in the special forces of our national police service and their performance is as good, if not better than their male counterparts. I therefore take this opportunity to compliment them on this achievement and to remind them that each one of them is a trailblazer and they must hold the torches for those behind them and keep the doors open. Distinguished invited guests and ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I wish to assure you that the Ministry of Defense will continue to work closely with the Ministry of Gender as well as other partners in order to give meaning to the strong political commitment for the promotion of gender empowerment in this critical docket of our government. I thank you once again and happy International Women's Day. It is now my honor and duty to invite a dear friend and the chief guest to this morning, the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Secretariat. Patricia. Your Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, Margaret Kenyatta. Honorable Cabinet Secretary, Professor Margaret Cobia. Honorable Ambassador, Dr. Monica Juma. Professor Colette Suda, Gender Secretary. My dear sisters, fellow leaders, Commonwealth brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, friends, um jambo. It is an amazing and rare privilege for me to be asked to join you all here and the remarkable women who come from the rich soil of Africa where humanity started. The women who have presented to you today, particularly those from Kenya, are the iridescent diamonds of our Commonwealth. They shine, not just for Kenya, not just for the 2.5 billion people of our Commonwealth, but I think they shine for our world. They are remarkable. And they are valued. And I am extraordinarily proud to be able to call the CSs of Kenya, my dear and much beloved friends. International Women's Day is indeed a day for all of us to celebrate the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. This is our day our moment, and I salute you all. I hope that you will all participate in our She Leads campaign to take the opportunity to celebrate the women who have inspired you. And I think we have had a feast today of inspirational women. 
It is nevertheless, and perhaps most importantly, also a day to take a pause and contemplate the long and arduous history of our society's pursuit for gender equality, whilst collectively envisaging a more equitable future, as we were invited to do right at the beginning of today by Professor Colette Suda. Because the gains women have made are from a historical perspective fairly recent. Women's suffrage was a product of the late 19th and 20th centuries. It is incredible to think that formal political institutions in many societies excluded women's participation in governance until then. African women were no exception. Indeed, some considered us as the least in society's pecking orders. Some were only recently enfranchised. And even then, in formal institutions, pervasive attitudes and beliefs prevented many from realizing their civil and political freedoms for decades. Today, we speak boldly of women holding public office. We are proud of women at the helm of the private sector. We have incredible examples of women who have achieved outstanding feats. Just recently, Ngozi Iwela ascended to the top as Director General of the WTO, but we do not forget that the two best candidates vying for that job were two great women. And the second woman, that amazing woman, was our own Amina Muhammad of Kenya. We want to emulate the work and passion of the late Professor Wangari Mahai, the first African woman to get a Nobel Peace Prize. We have Gracia Michelle's diplomatic acumen, and it is unparalleled. We have Chimamanda Adichie, who is the penmanship is indubitable. But what about the artistry of the great Lupita? And in the West, you have Angela Merkel's leadership. The list is endless. Remember, they talk of Angela Merkel as the Hausfrau. Well, there is no better nomination for or any of us to be a great Hausfrau keeping the house, which is our world, in good order. So women's participation in decision-making and their subsequent leadership in society is vital. And this was proven true even under the most turbulent circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we have to honor the men who have the psychiatry and understanding to choose women to lead. And that's why we honor His Excellency, the President of Kenya for his sagacity. <laughs> because look at the women he has chosen, brilliant women to lead in some of the most difficult portfolios of this country. And each of those women have shone. And so I want you now to celebrate the women leaders in Kenya who've led our Commonwealth. Because there is sufficient data to show that out of the sample of countries 
with similar socio-demographic and economic characteristics that were seen as important in the transmission of COVID-19, countries headed by women did considerably better than many other similar countries. New Zealand under Jacinda Ardern was the first to state to announce its success in meeting the ambitious goal of eradicating and not just controlling COVID-19 outbreaks. Others include Barbados under Prime Minister Motley and Bangladesh under Sheikh Hasina. So incidentally, whilst women's leadership was proving itself invaluable at a time of crisis, long existing structural, social and gender inequalities were exacerbated under the strain of the pandemic. Women bore the brunt of their unraveling societies. The rates of sexual and gender-based violence increased. Today, one in three women experience physical and or sexual abuse. Women lost their incomes at higher rates than men due to the vulnerability of their occupation. In Africa, for example, 89% are in the informal employment. And ironically, women were also disproportionately exposed to and affected by the disease. Over 60% of Africa's health workforce and essential social service providers are female. In addition to this, women at home shoulder the most care work, which increased exponentially under the pandemic. This year, therefore, as we take a bittersweet count of our gains and losses, undeniable, much progress has been made. But unfortunately, the gnawing at the back of our minds is a growing fear that we might all too quickly regress. How do we avoid this regression? How do we solidify our gains and make proper justification for non-discriminatory and inclusive societies? The answer, my friends, surprisingly, is found within the pandemic itself. There is a more incisive reason why female leaders performed better rather than the fact that they were just female. It involves the states from which they arise. According to economists who studied women's leadership during the pandemic, having a female leader is but one indication of society's egalitarianism. Furthermore, societies in which half of the population is empowered and included is statistically more likely to have a greater and a more diverse pool of talent from which to choose its leaders. Capable female leaders signify that people of diverse backgrounds and thus diverse perspectives, which are crucial in times of crisis, are able to win seats at the table. The argument for women's empowerment and inclusion is really an argument that open, inclusive and equitable societies are inherently better and evidentially do perform better than others. So we've heard about holding up half the sky. Well, women have to hold up their half too. It is this understanding that informs our Commonwealth Charter's recognition that gender equality and women's empowerment are essential components of human development and basic, basic human rights. 
So as we celebrate women's day to day, it is perhaps providential that it is also Commonwealth Day, forcing us to consider <laughs> the future of gender equality from an international governance and multilateral perspective. And you don't know how proud I am to be here with you on Commonwealth Day as your Commonwealth Secretary General. The pandemic revealed how interconnected we all are. The nature of the virus blurred out geographical boundaries and class stratification. It didn't care whether we were black or white, male or female, rich or poor, of faith or of none. Of course, the divides remain when we consider factors such as vaccine distribution. But the distribution of the virus itself has clearly revealed how truly interconnected we all are. This has put us to task to provide multilateral vision. In this light, the Commonwealth enjoys a vantage point from which it continues to demonstrate and justify the need for multilateral cooperation towards what is increasingly a common future. Today, I ask you to consider how egregiously gender violence affects the economic development of, of Commonwealth countries. Some small member states lose millions of dollars annually to violence against women. And the opportunity cost to development and particularly human capital development is enormous. And it is in our interest to find solutions together. Kenya and the Commonwealth member states are committed to gender equality. The Commonwealth Women's Ministerial Meeting, which is chaired by the great and wonderful Professor Kobia, for example, <laughs> showed incredible leadership during the course of the pandemic. It was Professor Kobia who said that irrespective of our separation physically, we had to have digital inclusion and we had to meet virtually to address this problem. And I thank her for that bold leadership. One of the results of this leadership is the Commonwealth Says No More, an initiative bringing together the Commonwealth Secretariat and the No More Foundation that was launched last year. Through the initiative, we committed ourselves to the prevention of domestic violence and sexual abuse by helping members record accurate data on the prevalence of violence, deliver grassroots projects, train community leaders, educate bystander responses, and provide awareness resources. And as here today, the Commonwealth is also committed to advancing women's leadership. Towards this end, the Secretariat is developing a guide on measures for advancing and enabling women's political representation in the Commonwealth, which will serve as a practical resource of options available to election management bodies, governments, political parties, civil society organizations, which are looking to promote or enable women's political participation and representation. And it is expected to be finalized in 2021. So that's this year. And we've developed a handbook for gender inclusive elections in Commonwealth Africa, achieving 50-50 by 2030. So not two thirds, 50-50. which reviews the systems, the legislation, and the best practice that will need to be implemented and effectively monitored in order to get more women into politics and to help to realize the Sustainable Development Goal 5, which boldly seeks to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Now, to ensure that women's representation is considered at all stages of the electoral cycle. 
the Secretariat has also developed a checklist to support election observer groups to help strengthen women's political participation in the Commonwealth. More than just elective politics, we are working tirelessly on a number of projects relating to ending child, early and forced marriage and other harmful practices. And I so welcome the great work that's been done right here in Kenya by His Excellency, the President. That leadership is not only welcome, but it has to be applauded. We are currently compiling a best practice guide on curbing the continuation of these circumstances for women and girls right across the Commonwealth. And we're working on addressing sexual harassment in the workplace with the International Labour Organization. And we're dedicated to championing sexual and reproductive health and rights and partnered with the Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women in 2019 to consult member countries based in Geneva on the establishment of femicide observatories to track data on the gender-based killing of women in our Commonwealth countries. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, this is just a portion of the ambitious work that we are doing at the Secretariat. Our rationale is clear. The purpose of governance at any point, whether local governance in our towns and wards, national governance, or even international governance, is to make perfect our unions and force the long and winded moral arc of the universe towards justice. This involves removal of structural, social, economic barriers that hamper people's development. Today, we contemplate how to make our societies more inclusive of women. Tomorrow, we focus on others whose inclusion and participation is not optimal. Our work, in whatever positions we are in, is to build better societies so as to achieve our collective goals, restore hope, expand our communities and our communes, and revitalize our environments. Ever present in our minds should be the question of how we can individually and collectively reconfigure for better, the stilts on which our societies are hoisted. The challenge upon us now is great. We are called upon to build back better and to fortify a world which has been ravaged by loss. Not just loss of life, but also loss of livelihoods, and in many ways, loss of hope. I assure you that the Commonwealth is wholly dedicated to illuminating the path on which states walk into a new and better world. That the people in these states within our beloved Commonwealth walk out into a new and more inclusive world is our driving force. Kenya's constitution has been a beacon of light for the Commonwealth in gender parity. Implementation has been a challenge. And this proves in our minds that we will still need to make a mental shift so I challenge you all, ladies and gentlemen, to be the change Africa wants to see, not only for the good of women, but for the good of all humanity. It is our time. It is our opportunity, because if not us, who? And if not now, when? I know many of you are tired, as I am tired. 
of waiting for tomorrow. Let's not wait for tomorrow. Let us seize today. So I want to thank you wholeheartedly for inviting me and for listening. And I want to wish you the happiest, happiest Women's Day. But also, and you'd expect me to say this, Happy Commonwealth Day. Asante sana, nawa shukuru. Your Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, Margaret Kenyatta, allow me to thank the two speakers who have just come before me, Honorable C.S. Juma, for her remarks and commitment that she continues to promote gender equality in the ministry where she is, coordinating with the Minister of Public Service Agenda. Let me also thank Honorable Wright, uh, Honorable Patricia Scotland, Queen's Council, who is our visiting guest speaker. We thank you very much for the, your remarks because Patricia Scotland is a woman of many firsts. She's the first Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Can we give her a clap for that? <laughs> and she continues to break new grounds for women regarding gender equality and women empowerment. Therefore, any time I have an, had an opportunity to engage with her, I have always felt when I listen to her, she challenges the problem or the, the problem that we continue to face. And the fact that she can be able to situate today and look at tomorrow, I agree totally with her. If not you, who? If not now, when? recognizing many of the struggles we have now are kind of new, taking into account that there are those we stand on their shoulders, that there are some gains we have made, therefore we do not have to struggle with that. So Queen's Council, Scotland, I really wish to thank you and I'm happy you are in our network, me and CS Juma, and we can get you when an opportunity avails itself. I would also want to thank everyone in this room and elsewhere. I know those who are in other Citrus campuses who are watching us and who are together with us. We have been here for quite a while, but I think we are all gaining something. I'm sure we have one, two to three things to take home. The program has been long because we also said we have to challenge why we celebrate. We have to demonstrate why we celebrate each year. And I think it is for that reason, there have been many speakers, the 50 million women speak. And especially now when we are talking about African continental free trade area. So I think it just, we must challenge ourselves in our celebration to put something new on the table as a result. And thank you very much, Moriah. Thank you very much, uh, uh, the representative of the East Africa community, because I think we have really benefited and to know what opportunities lie there, especially now the world is going digital. Your Excellency, allow me now to, to say a few remarks and we finally invite our Excellency, who is our chief guest. Uh, I really want to thank her because once she accepted, yes, she's going to be our chief guest, then we are able to prepare for this occasion. Sometimes we miss or we take it very far from the International Women's Day celebration, but she, she just allowed us. And let me also say, the whole of this event is put together by our office. Can we give her a clap? <laughs> that our first lady with our office, supported by Connie Kakonyo. They believed in this event and they gave us all the support that we needed. Even the staff you see here are from our office. I'm humbled.
The first lady of the Republic of Kenya, Margaret Kenyatta. The Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Honorable Wright Patricia Scotland. The CS, my colleague in defense, Dr. Monica Juma, who is also my friend. The Deputy Secretary General of East Africa, Christopher Mbazi Vomo. The UN Resident Coordinator, Stephen Jackson. The UN uh, family, especially the UN women, Madam Anna Mutavati, Kiwopa, uh, Chair, Honorable Wamchomba, and the other members of Parliament present, Chairs of the Constitution Commission, Chief Administrative Secretaries present, including Honorable Chavez, Rachel, who is in Mombasa manning the same uh, venue, PSS present, especially PS of gender, Professor Colette Sunda, sorry, the Chief of Staff, Constance Gakonyo, in the office of the First Lady. The days are gentlemen. Let me say that I'm very pleased to warmly welcome you all to the International Day 2021 celebration. The International Women's Day is celebrated annually on 8th March to recognize and celebrate unique and diverse achievements of women globally. I wish to thank our first lady, Her Excellency Margaret Kenyatta, for honoring us with this invitation and also accepting to preside over this celebration and the many events that we are going to present, especially the awards for the trailblazers and also graduating a class of, on, on leadership, which is going to be presented by Dr. Jennifer Liria, who is with us here. The theme for this year, International Women's Day, that is women in leadership, achieving an equal future in the COVID-19 world, illustrates the urgency of putting women empowerment and gender equality at the core of the recovery and the bouncing back better. Women in leadership and decision-making in our country, that journey has been long and bumpy with very many obstacles on the way. However, the determination of women and commitment of the many women to ensure that their perspective are brought into the table cannot be ignored. Therefore, we celebrate gains made as, and also reflect on the social, economic, political, and the cultural context in which women live women and girls live and work. Today, we recognize it is a gradual process, a journey that we are committed to work together regardless of our diversity in terms of socioeconomic status, education, ethnicity, political orientation. We have an agenda that we have to work together. Our vision as women, is that women and men will have an equal opportunity and adherence our development and getting to a better quality of life. Your Excellency, as you are aware, the vision of His Excellency the President Uhuru Kenyatta is to have a united, peaceful, prosperous, inclusive nation. It is for that reason the Ministry of Gender promotes those policies and the program. We recognize that our president is very engaged in all in supporting any agenda of promoting gender equality and women empowerment. It's only on Friday, as you have heard, we are engaged the elders of Saburu as they declared getting to zero new cases of gender, of FGM. It was a great day. Can we give him a clap? <laughs> Your Excellency, the first lady, let me take this opportunity also to say that as our ministry, 
We are about policy and coordination. Most of the work is done by the people in this room and others who are watching us wherever they are. We want to thank the sponsors who have put this program together, the organizing committee teams. We want to thank the ENA organization also which has supported us. We also want to thank this Kenya School of Government for putting this event together and we're allowing us to use the, site, the other site crisis. And also everybody who is in this development partners, UN family, our visiting uh, guest speaker for making this a reality. We just can't thank you enough. Your Excellency, in conclusion, Kenya commits to stand on the right side of the history in appreciating the role women play in national development and in implementation of other international values and standards on gender equality and women empowerment. Your Excellency, the first lady, I'm confident that with the effective implementation of, of gender and development policy and the enforcement of laws, continued political will and the change of our attitude we will achieve 50-50 an equal world. Well, working together today, we commit ourselves to continue to choose to challenge the barriers with more energy and with more commitment. Today, we take stock of what barriers still remain and we will choose to challenge those barriers. With those very many remarks, I would like you to be upstanding as we invite, it's my humble duty to invite Her Excellency, the first lady of the Republic of Kenya to address us and the nation. Welcome, Madam Your Excellency. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, happy International Women's Day. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, happy International Women's Day. It's a pleasure to be here with you all to commemorate this year's global event and to celebrate with women across the country, around the world, who give this day its meaning. We celebrate this day amid the global COVID-19 pandemic that has in so many ways disrupted our lives, our families, our communities, and the world we knew. It's therefore my joy to send my warmest greetings to all women listening from different parts of the country. I'm grateful to God for the gift of life for all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, for over a century, we have honored and set apart this day to review the progress we have made as a society towards gender equality, to reflect upon opportunities and challenges that we face in the ongoing struggle for gender equality and to resolve to do whatever we can, wherever we are, to bring about meaningful change that has bearing on women's lives. We may not always share consensus on how to define the numerous problems facing women or agree on what constitutes progress for us. That is a good thing because our different shades of opinion, our spirited debate pushes us to think all the more harder about these issues and empowers us all to defend our, our diverse perspectives with greater clarity and conviction. And that is what today is about. It's about addressing our progress and also affirming our work is not yet done. This is why International Women's Day continues to exist. 2020 was a difficult year for everyone. It was a time when we witnessed the many gains we had made over time eroded. New barriers and challenges emerged with the COVID-19 pandemic, including the increased domestic violence, teenage pregnancies, unpaid care, unemployment, and poverty. 
we lost the gains we had made in ensuring that our pregnant mothers give birth safely. Many women have lost their lives while fulfilling their God-given role in childbirth. But during this time, we were also reminded of the essential and unequivocal role women have played since the history of time as caregivers, peacemakers, family and community organizers, alongside their domestic and professional responsibilities. This year's global theme, Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World, therefore resonates well with our current global circumstances. With everything that happened in 2020, we also had silver linings. We had the opportunity to celebrate some firsts in our history. The election of the first woman vice president in the United States of America, Her Excellency Kamala Harris, has done women proud and broken the glass ceiling by going into history books as the 49th vice president and the first female occupant of that office in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, as we commemorate this year's International Women's Day, we are reminded that women still face many challenges as they pursue their right to equitable participation in leadership due to many factors, lack of knowledge, finances, agency, and voice. This year's theme calls for women leadership. It amplifies the theme of the 65th session of the Commission on the Status of Women due to be held later in March on women's full and effective participation and decision-making in public life, as well as the elimination of violence. It highlights the need for us to demand for a level playing field for women and girls, irrespective of race, religion, or social background. Here in Kenya, while we applaud the current 23% representation of women in the National Assembly, we still have more work to be done to achieve the constitutionally proposed two-thirds gender rule. We also, as women, must continue to raise our voices and protect ourselves against harmful practices such as FGM and early child marriage. These factors impede our pathway to reaching our gifted potential. Let us continue working together for the progress we believe in. Let us all begin with ourselves in our own spaces, in our hope. That the man has changed to their advantage. Our country is very beautiful. Being bold for change. We need to be bold in a big way. We know that women can bring a difference in leadership by ensuring that the needs and aspirations of women and men, boys and girls are addressed equitably. As we celebrate the theme, women leadership, I urge all women to actively take up opportunities and offer themselves for elective and different leadership positions at both, at both national and county levels. I'm personally encouraged by the evidence that there's a lot of creativity, innovation, thought, time and capital across the country being channeled towards shifting the status quo closer to equity and justice. Let us all continue along this path. Today, we have the opportunity to celebrate some remarkable women who have had an incredible impact in our country either individually or through collective action. We shall be celebrating these wonderful and courageous women through our annual Trailblazers Award and recognition program. I congratulate you all for your selfless resilience and determination. With those remarks, I wish you all once again, a happy International Women's Day. Stay safe and God bless you. A round of applause to Our Excellency, the First Lady. Thank you for that wonderful, wonderful speech from Her Excellency, the First Lady Mama Taifa.
At this moment, on the same note, kindly, as we wait, I would like uh, to move to another session, confinement of the annual Trailblazers Award and Recognition Program, which will begin now. And as we begin the next session, I would like us to know that as Her Excellency, the First Lady will be mentioning your name, wherever you are, you will stand because we like to recognize you. And uh, thank you because we have also received applause from Kisumu, Garissa, Kakamega, and KSG Mombasa. To apigia makofi wote. Wamepokea mwishima wa mwataifa katika njia ifaayo. Your Excellency, the First Lady. On this day, the 8th of March, 2021, I hereby confer these awards to the following in recognition of your outstanding achievement and contribution in advancing the gender equality and women empowerment agenda. Dr. Millicent Omukaga, Economic and Financial Inclusion for Women and Girls Award. Selena Nkoile, Anti-FGM Champion. Samburu Girls Foundation, Anti-FGM and Community Advocacy Award. Rose Mbone, Women's Peace and Security. Washeke Washira, Dr. Joyce Laboso Award. Elizabeth Marami, Miriam L. Mawi Award. Dr. Rose Juma, Resilience Award. Monica, Cherotich Misoy, nurse recognized for her exemplary service during the COVID-19 pandemic. Senator Agnes Zani, Bunge Award. Sabina Shege, Bunge Award. Engineer Joseph Joroge, he for she. Nyeri County, County Award. Ken Jen, Pink Energy Innovation Award. Standard Chartered WPP Scan Group and Safaricom Institution Award. Congratulations to you all. I congratulate all of them once again. This day, March 2020. Those ones whom the names have been called, now we'll call you to please come up front as you will receive the awards from our CS, Professor Margaret Kovia. The names which have been called, Dr. Millicent Omukaga, please from Busia. Those names which have been called, please make your way in front here so that you are able to receive the awards from Madam CS. Let us go as the names were called. Dr. Millicent Omukaga, next Selena Nicole, Nicole, next Rose Mbone. Let us follow in that order. Tafadali, tukwe tayari kupokea. I request ma, ma, Madam CS to move into the red carpet. Back at least, there we go. And now we want to proceed so that we can receive the awards. Dr. Millicent Amukaga, Tumpige Makofi, Tafadali. We continue, just go, proceed to receive the award. Proceed to receive the award. Let us give them a round of applause as they receive the award because the names has been called by Her Excellency. Now we follow. Go and receive your awards from Madam C.S. Tuwa shangilie wanapopokea zawadi kutoka kwa mwishmiwa waziri wetu.
Thank you. We will, that one is not present. Thank you. Let us give them a round of applause. Let us applaud them, our trail, trailblazers. Thank you for that wonderful occasion. And now, as Madam CS takes her seat, we are going to move to the next session of the program, whereby we are going to have a graduation of the Women in Leadership Training Program. And at this point, allow me to invite, allow me to invite whoever is going to take us through the program, allow me to invite Dr. Riria to come and take us through the program. Let us give a round of applause. Wakina mama oe. Oh, come on, you can't sleep when you are making history. Wakina mama oe. Let them begin by really recognizing the presence of our first, the first lady of Kenya and the mother of this republic for being here with us today. It's an honor for women of this country. It's a mother like us. Give her a clap. <laughs> we are also blessed to be here today with our honorable Baroness Patricia Scotland. Women, I want to tell you, sisterhood is global. It has been really, really proved today. Your Excellency, we have our very special CS here, whom when we do something, she's here with us. Give her a clap. <laughs> I also want to recognize the presence of everyone else, protocols observed. Your Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, our sister and mother, we admire you, we, we emulate you. You will recall that at this venue last year, at the same venue, the Kenya School of Government, led by the same CS, Professor Mangrit Kobia, and supported by us all, we launched the Women Leadership Curriculum. This is history in the making. Our first lady launched the leaders the Women Leaders Curriculum, the first of its kind in Kenya and the region. We today demonstrate, and our CS, Margaret Kobia, that we are graduating two categories of people. We are graduating 17 trainers of trainers. The reason is because we have taken stock today of where we have reached and you have heard it from everyone. We have decided we are going forward and you have heard how we are going to go about it. We now want to demonstrate that where we are going, we will be ready for it. And I want to remind you, when we're in this discussion, girls in this country and in this world become women. So they are part and parcel of this conversation. I want to also remind you something that I had. One of my friends long time ago I met, and I, she is well, I hope, Andre, Andrin Albright. She said to me, in the modern world, women empowerment is not merely a goal, but a cornerstone of democratic growth. This is because women raise issues that others overlook, devote energy to protect that which others ignore, 
reach out to constituencies that others neglect and help societies move forward together. As I read, as I present to you, your excellency, our mother of this nation, the trainers of trainers, they will not train in Kenya alone, but they will go into the African region to train, give them a clap. So I will present the first graduates. This is an historical moment. History is made. We have a curriculum in place and we have trained us to train not only in this country, but to get out into the region and train leaders. Because if women leaders are not present, and I want you to give another clap right now. To, 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 to Baroness Patricia Scotland, the General Secretary of Commonwealth. You, don't you see where we are, women? Take a stop, give her a clap. So, Your Excellency, I present to you proudly 17 graduates who would not have been here if UN Women, Dr. Anne Mutavati, UN Women, our CS, were not there to push this, to nurture this, to push it, to make sure. Anna, where I come from, um, the trainers, the trainers in the group include people led by Sarah Mohoya and the secret CSS uh, Department of Gender. DTF, if they were not together, we would never have got here. We are here because we are proving collectiveness will get women where we are going. So as I read these names, some of them are seated here. Others are seated, you know, Kenya, the government school, like this one, you know, all over the country. Kenya School of Government Centers. We thank this initiative and we thank this institution for supporting us. So I'm going to read the names of the first graduates. And as I read, you please stand. They're all wearing white searches. Jerry Kabeberi, Anderitu, Colonel Kemani Jogona, Lydia Moiro, Mire Jerry, Damaris Getonga, Uslambahati, Anjogu, Barasa Nyukuri, Omweri Angema, Joshua Oiro, Mary Odhiambo, Winfriend Richuma, Gloria Ndekei, Mbete Maina, Professor Catherine Dungo, Sarah Mohoya, and Sandley Asan Indile, posthumously because of COVID. Now, I, you keep standing, please remain standing. I wish to continue now presenting to Her Excellency the graduates themselves. They have been trained. They are, they are the people who are going to run. They are called the unstoppables and they are going to run. Your Excellency, they will run and win. Alice Omondi, Agneta Kelepo, Anita Mbae, Anne Karioki, Anne Caroline Modoni, Doreen Dande, Dr. Juri Eskememia, Dr. Cynthia Chipilati, Dr. Janet Murchaberi, Emery Nyabuto, Emaculate Shinziri, Esther Karioki, Esther Kache, Eunice Wangare Kerie, Faith Memusi Lenge, 
Florence Ouma, Gladys Chania, Grace Ndida, Amis Sanjaja, Jaza, Hesel Katana, Eudabeda Lukulu, Honorable Jacqueline Okanya, Honorable Omchom Bagadoni, Honorable Sabina Chege, Honorable Dr. Susan Chebet, Honorable Elizabeth Kipsang, Honorable Julia Kandie, Irene Mayaka, Isako Omuro, Jacqueline Okaya, Jacqueline Ugari, Jacqueline Koini, Josephine Wagoi, Julie Waweru, Karen Kasam, Karen Nyomoita Magara, Kemunto Empet, Empatet, Liliani Anyango, Lucy Chogo, Lucy Moria, Lydia Jerry Ndongo, Margaret Oketch, Miriam Muronga, Mary Atieno Onyango, Maureen Kemunto, Maureen Kawera Kerega, Melab Rumala, Masse Nyabwara, Melka Sugut, Mary Saint Wamboi, Miriam Munoko, Milingi Wangoi, Nelea Okechi, Nolena Nanyoya, Pauline Lengulis, Purity Ngigi, Rachel Aviambo Omoro, Rehab Damboki, Regina Chepkemboi, Rispa Ruto, Rita Ndonge, Rose Njeri, Rose Linda Adambi, Rose Linda Simiu, Roslyn Mudeu, Sahara Rashid, Sarah Malel, Sela Atieno Opio, Susan Jogona, Susan Gitari, Susan Owino, Susan Wamaida, Honorable Waidera Chege, Zara Rashid. Your Excellency, that is a list of 71 trainees who have ran and who are going to run and they are going to, to win the Unstoppables. You remain standing. I hereby confer the certificate of achievement. I hereby confer the certificate of achievement in recognition of your successful completion of the Women in Political Leadership Training on this day, 8th of March, 2021. Congratulations. Let us continue applauding them, our graduates. Thank you and congratulations wherever you are watching us. Wonderful. Thank you very much. We also would like uh, on the same note now to recognize also Honorable Allow me to thank you. You may be seated first as I call my co MC and Kikuta to take us through the next session. Thank you very much. We now want to officially launch the 50 million women uh, networking platform. And for this part, I would like to invite you, uh, Madam Cabinet Secretary, to join us up front alongside the EAC Deputy Secretary General Christophe Bazivamo, who will present to you a symbolic token, the booklet for the launch of the 50 million Africa Women Speak. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please a round of applause as we launch the 50 million African Women Speak networking platform project, a joint program of the East Africa community, the government of Kenya, to the Ministry of Public Service and Gender. You can log on now to www.womenconnect.org. And at this juncture, the Cabinet Secretary will present to the Secretary General, Patricia Scotland, a plaque in thanks for the support of the Commonwealth towards women, and in particular, to Kenya's work in this initiative. Ma'am. We can do better than that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. This plaque is presented to Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, in recognition of your support, ma'am, to the realization of gender equality and empowerment of women in Kenya and the entire Commonwealth of Nations. Thank you. We would now like to Request Cabinet Secretary C.S. Juma to join us down here at the front, ma'am. And this plaque. The Cabinet Secretary joins her colleague to present this plaque to the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, Her Excellency, Madam Margaret Kenyatta, in recognition of her commitment and outstanding contribution to advancing gender equality and empowerment of women. Do we have a representative from the First Lady's office to receive this plaque on her behalf? None. Thank you, we'll ensure it gets to her. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, here you are. Please come forward. Eva Minor, Eva Minor joins us to receive this plaque on behalf of the First Lady. Thank you very much indeed. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. We are now reaching the end of our program and I'd like to invite my co-MC to take us through uh, the final part as we all stand for this last segment of our program. Please, to your feet, thank you. Thank you, my co-MC, it has been a pleasure. Thank you for all of us who have attended this wonderful occasion. And wherever you are and wherever you are watching us, may I request that we all be upstanding. Thereafter, all the awardees, you remain seated, you'll be directed where to go from here as our VIPs text leave. We are going for a photo session out here whereby we'll be joined on the photo by all the stakeholders and all our partners alike. For now, let us all remain upstanding on attention moon as the Kenya national anthem shall be played.
Can we give the last round of applause as our VIPs and our guests leave at their own pleasure? And as they are leaving, I would like to announce that there's lunch.